Dearest of friends, I hate to leave you on your bed of pain, but I did promise Ruth I'd be home at a decent hour tonight. You're home at a decent hour every night. Well, you had to be indispensable. I, on the other hand, choose to be witty, charming, and physically desirable. Wait a minute. How does this sound? Uh, it... Please, I'd just soon not become creatively involved. No, no, wait a minute. I think I'd come uh, Don, up with Don, it's none of my business. Okay, but you're missing a piece of brilliant rhetoric. Oh, I'm sure I am. So if it's all the same to you, I would just as soon leave feeling fortunate rather than envious. <laughs> How's that for timing? A sure sign of star material. Well, talk about charming, witty, and all that other stuff. What other stuff? Uh, but Jerry was being sophisticated again. Ah, oh, I had a drink at lunch, eh? Are you going to tell Ruth? Of course not. She thinks you're on a diet. Where's your father? I thought I'd be here already. I told them we had an 8.30 dinner reservation. Yeah, well, it's just as well. I haven't finished this article yet, and I need... Oh! What was that? Oh, take a look. I'm going to need another half hour or so. Oh, oh. oh, my gosh, somebody's been hurt. One side, out of the way. Oh! Oh! Donald, there's something about that moan. Oh! 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 Are you all right, Donald? Okay, You're sitting okay, down. Put him over here. here. Do you feel faint? Right. No, 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 I'm all right. Somebody put his head between his knees. It already is. How did it happen? Well, he, he slipped out in the hall. There's a little pool of water from a leak. They've held the Olympics in smaller pools than that. Oh! oh. oh Donald, something's broken. All right, honey, now take it easy. There's a doctor in the next building. Vin All right, that's a good suggestion. Hey, 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 is he from the building? No newspaper man would use the language that he just did out in the hall. Well, so who is he? He's the father of that girl. I can't be absolutely certain, but I don't think there's anything seriously wrong, Mr. Marie. Oh. Not, not unless I've developed a case of pneumonia sitting here freezing to death. Oh, Daddy, it's not that cold. I'd advise you to see your personal physician as soon as possible. Unfortunately, he's out of town. Well, I could send you to Bellevue or to Cornell Institute of Medicine for x-rays. Please, I'd rather not go to any of your fly-by-night hospitals. <laughs> uh, no offense, Dr. Wheeler. It's just that I don't want any more strange, clammy hands poking into me. Oh, Daddy, I don't think you ought to go to Brucia tonight. I think you'd better stay with me. But thank you so much for coming, Doctor. It's the price a doctor pays for having a listed number. <laughs> See, Daddy, everything's going to be fine. You know, frankly, I've never seen you look better. I think that exercise did you some good. What's that, Mr. Marie? Take it easy now. I guess maybe I am all right. Don't move too quickly in case of post-traumatic shock. What's that? Uh, the blood could drain out of your brain and you faint a little. You're kidding, Jerry. Well, I'm only trying to help. <laughs> I better lean on you. And I think I should send for Dr. Hindoff in the morning. He's in Brewster. You want him to come all the way to New York? He can't make a house call? <laughs> Good idea, Mr. Murray. At your age, you can't be too careful. Jerry, neither can you. Now, you're sure you'll be all right till the doctor gets here? Go to your interview, sweetheart. The show must go on. Even I know that. I'd fix you another sandwich, but I hate for you to get indigestion, too. Two is enough. Three, but who's counting? <laughs> Jokes while I'm in agony. I was only trying to take your mind off it. That Dr. Handoff is taking his own sweet time. Well, Daddy, he couldn't leave Bruce until his office hours were over. Whatever happened to neither rain nor sleet nor snow shall stay these... As for postmen, doctors take the Hippocratic Oath. Marvelous. Now they start out by promising to be hypocrites. Daddy, one has absolutely no connection with the other. I never had a backache in my life till Hitler came along. And if he is in South America, I hope he's got a ruptured disc. Oh, Dr. Heindorf, come in. Don't tell me. I'd know that face anywhere. And to think I haven't seen you since the day you were born. Oh, you saw me in Brewster last month and you gave me a checkup. Oh, that's right, I forgot. What's the matter with you? Oh, nothing. I never felt better in my life. Then why am I here? You came to see me, not her. 
What's the matter with him? Well, the will, he slipped on a marble floor and he fell down. What'd you do, drive down here in your horse and buggy? Obviously, he didn't land on his mouth. <laughs> How are you? How should I know? You're the doctor. He's been having a lot of pain, doctor. Good. I'm glad I didn't make a trip for nothing. <laughs> Look, I have to go on an interview. I'll be back just as soon as I can. No hurry. It'll take at least an hour for us to aggravate each other completely before I start to examine them. Well, I feel better just knowing you're here. Now, Daddy, you'll be a good boy. Bye-bye. Bye. What happened was, it was this water around nice the water cooler. Nice apartment. And I slipped. You know she never even cried once when I vaccinated her? Heindorf, we were talking about me. You were talking about you. That's why you came to New York, in case you've forgotten. Big place, New York. You know how many doctors they got on Park Avenue alone? You can go blind from just reading the shingles. Heindorf, are you going to examine me? Heindorf, are you going to examine me? Not New York shingle doctor, are you going to examine me? Well, at least you know which side your health is butted on. Hold this under your tongue. Now go wash out your mouth. That's my pen. <laughs> Allinger? Yeah. Stuart Hurley, claims department. Oh, sure. Fine, what can I do for you? Well, I just wanted to let you know that we're on top of last night's accident. Uh, well, we appreciate that. Everything that can be done is being done. 300 nuisance lawsuits in the last six months. Two collected. The others, chop, chop. <laughs> hmm? Chop, chop. <laughs> oh. Don, you wouldn't believe what... Oh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, is this private? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Jerry, this is um, Stuart Hurley. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Stuart Hurley of the Claims Department. Uh, how do you do? Jerry Bauman, one of our finer writers. Bauman. Right. Oh, uh, don't let me interrupt anything. And uh, speak freely. We share the same file cabinet and therefore are on the most intimate of terms. I was just leaving. Uh, yeah, well, uh, thank you for your concern, Mr. Hurley. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, the accident's daughter, Miss Marie. Isn't she a friend of yours? Yes, 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 she is. I thought so. I like that. The little dash of coincidence gives me something to get my teeth into. <laughs> Boy meets girl. Boy works in building. Girl's father falls in building. <laughs> I assume that he's been uh, checked by a competent physician. Physician? Mr. Marie. Oh, no, no, he, he's fine. Yeah, just a little shook up, but nothing to worry about. Well, in that case, there should be no trouble getting him to sign this waiver. I, uh, yeah, will you leave it on the desk? Wise decision, Hollinger. We'd all hate to see so promising a career unnecessarily interrupted. Goodbye. Yeah, uh, bye, Mr. Hurley. Hurley, Hurley, bye. Bauman? I'm astounded. If anyone had told me you'd let a guy walk in here and put the arm on you, I wouldn't have believed it. Jerry, what are you talking about? Don, where were you? I mean, nobody has the right to be that preoccupied with the story. Even Hemingway would have looked up if someone had implied he was committing collusion. Collusion? Who said anything about collusion? Boy meets girl. Boy works in building. Girl's father falls in building. Sign a waiver or forget your career. Who said that? He didn't say that, did he? I give you a direct quote, and I'm standing here waiting. <laughs> Nothing. I wasn't even listening. I could run out and get him back. No, no, forget it, Jerry. It's not that big a deal. Some little guy trying. Don, the man is trying to blackmail you. With what? I'm not afraid of losing my job, and Ann's father's not going to sue anyway. There's nothing wrong with him. It's indecent for one man to have that kind of security. <laughs> doubt about it. Accuse him of collusion? Hemingway would have looked up. Don't worry about him. Condition he's in, you should worry about his insurance company. Goodbye. Goodbye. I could say it's been a pleasure, but why should I lie to such a dear old friend? Goodbye, Goodbye little Ann. Bye. Hold it. Oh, Donald, the doctor said Daddy's fine. Oh, that's good news, Mr. Marie. But you were worried to death. Well, I was concerned. The magazine was worried to death. Be sure to tell your magazine how flattered I am. I 
Actually, it was just this guy in the claims department. They don't have anything to do with us. You know how it is with big business. Anyway, they gave me this waiver for you to sign. Ah, oh, and they say organizations have no heart. You know, Daddy, maybe you ought to add a little thank you note. Thank you for letting me fall in your corridor? <laughs> well, I mean, since there was no harm done. Oh, I'm good. Hi, Jerry. Hello, everybody. Just checking. How's the victim? There is no victim. Daddy's feeling fine. Yeah, and I can't wait to tell Hurley personally. Yeah, I better sign this waiver. I've got to start getting back to Brewster. Did you say waiver? Yeah, it's just a release form to say Daddy isn't hurt, because Daddy isn't hurt. No, wait, 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 wait. He, he isn't hurt today, but what about tomorrow and next week and next year? No, no, I cannot in all good conscience stand here and let you sign a waiver. Jerry, I honestly don't think this is any of your business. Oh, I suppose my Aunt Martha wasn't my business. What Aunt Martha? The one who signed a waiver just before she passed out. And three years later, when she didn't have a leg to stand on, they told her she didn't have a leg to stand on. And she didn't. The boy has a point. He also has a big mouth. Why, because you won't admit that dummy had the effrontery, the effrontery to hint the magazine had let you go? You discuss this with your company? This begins to sound like collusion. That was how I looked up. Just like Hemingway. Well, you're not going to get away with it. I won't sign. Well, one thing's for sure. What? If Daddy won't sign the waiver, there's no point in sending a thank you note. <laughs> We're uh, uh, an intimate family here, not just an unfeeling business. Well, I've always believed that, sir. And we depend upon the integrity and the unshakable loyalty of our employees, Mr. Heminger. <laughs> that, that's Hollinger. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, of course. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's dispense with formalities and uh, just use first names. Now, ah, that's our way, isn't it? I, I guess it is. Bob. <laughs> what is it? Uh, what is what? Your first name. Uh, well, it's, it's Donald. Don. 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 <laughs> Don, <clears throat> when I talk about uh, integrity and unshakable loyalty, now, I don't mean to imply that you don't uh, think the same way the rest of us think. I mean, uh, well, what the heck? Uh, every man dreams about being rich someday. <laughs> yes, sir, it's great to be rich. I'm rich, so I know what I'm talking about. I, I don't think you quite understand, Mr. Prentice. Uh, oh, Bob. Bob, you see... You know, I can remember talks that I had with my dad when uh, he was running Newsview and I was still in college. I'm talking to you now in exactly the same way. Son, he used to say, application and devotion to duty is what gets the cabin raised. Uh, oh, well. yes, yes, I do. Young people are impatient to get rich quick, do it the easy way. Well, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't even last that way. And believe me, you don't enjoy it as much when you get it. Now, do you ever look at it that way? Do you ever think about things that way? No. Uh, no, no, I haven't, to be perfectly honest. I've been too busy breaking my neck trying to knock stories out, meet deadlines, and beat every other magazine to the punch. Well, do you think for one minute that that's gone unnoticed? Do you think I'm not aware of that with each issue that comes off the press? Here's another week of News View, and a major contributor to its success is Dan Heminger. <laughs> Holland. Dan Holland. Don Hollinger. <laughs> I don't think that you've paid any attention to what I've been trying to tell you for the past <laughs> ten minutes. Well, what is infinitely worse is that you've been paying no attention to what I've been trying to do for the past four years. And now because someone I happen to know fell in a corridor and might be thinking of suing for his inalienable rights, it's being implied that I'm disloyal and that my job is in jeopardy. Well, well if any or part of that is true, I, I don't know what I'm doing here in the first place. You need another Hurley, not me. I don't think I appreciate your attitude, Dillinger. Uh, I, uh, look, look. Now, you're not going to have any trouble remembering the name anymore, if for no other reason than it's a mission from the directory board in the lobby. There'll be a space in the H's between Hodgkins and Hotsmith. Look, I, I, look, I forgot what I started to say. I quit. 
I'll see you around, Bob. <laughs> can't throw away a promising career without explaining all the facts. What's the matter? Well, Donald's quit his job because the magazine thinks there's collusion between you. <laughs> That's ridiculous. We don't even like each other. Just Donald, I'm coming right over. Now, you stay right there. I mean, d don't go out of town or, or do anything foolish. Not until I've had a chance to plead with you. Okay, goodbye, Donald. Now, Daddy, you've got to stop all this lawsuit nonsense and sign that waiver. I most certainly will not. All I need is a shrewd lawyer who's willing to apply himself a little, and I could wind up owning that magazine. There's nothing wrong with you. Dr. Heindorf said so. Are you going to listen to a quack who tried to take my temperature with a ballpoint pen? That quack has been taking care of all of us since before I was born. But Hollinger's already quit. What good will it do if I drop the suit now? Donald quit because he's not the kind of man who's going to wait around to get fired. And besides, he's already been threatened twice because of you. Oh, Daddy, please. I wouldn't ask you if it weren't terribly important to me. All right. All right. If it means that much to you. It does. If the Prince of Wales can give up the throne of England for a perfect stranger, it's the least I can do for my own daughter. <laughs> Honey, I've been deluding myself all these years. Oh, no, you haven't, Donald. It's, it's just that you've let yourself get all excited and angry and mixed up. I think it's too much association with me. You're beginning to overreact to everything. I'm being realistic. I mean, if you're going to be a writer, I mean really be a writer, then security can't be all that important. It's all my fault. Well, what's wrong with that? There's always a woman behind a man helping him, encouraging him. I'll write a novel or a play, and when I get the Pulitzer Prize, I can say I owe it all to this girl and her father and a uh, leaky water cooler. You're just saying that. No, no, I mean it. You don't. I do. I really do. Well, if, if that's the way you really want it. Of course, if worse comes to worse, I can always write for television. <laughs> and if I ever play a part in a television show that you write, I promise I'll never say... She wouldn't say that. What bigger sacrifice could an actress make? <laughs> oh, who is that? Oh, hi, Mr. Murray. Hello. I just come from the publisher of your magazine. What happened, Daddy? I said, Mr. Prentice, I'm Lou Marie, and I'm perfectly willing to drop this lawsuit, providing you reinstate Hollinger immediately. Why did you do that? I don't want to go back to work for Newsview. Well, you're not going to. <laughs> because he told me I didn't have a leg to stand on, and then he threw me out of his office. And in addition, he was pretty rude about it. What uh, kind of a television show? <laughs> Don, is it true what I heard? <laughs> yeah, it's true. You didn't quit. Of course I quit. But you're throwing away a career. Look, Jerry, I have thought it over very carefully, and they have proven to me that I mean absolutely nothing Who to them. Who proved? What proved? How can you go out and throw yourself to the wolves? Not a, a man like you. I, 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 are you going to go out and join that vast army of can't write their names nobodies who call themselves writers, huh? What are you going to do, write poetry, grow your hair long, wear beads? Look, Jerry, I have made up my mind. Oh, Boy, Don, I feel responsible. I just... The whole thing is making me nauseous. Look, Jerry, you had nothing to do with it. I appreciate your concern, but forget it. Hollinger, didn't I give you a... I'm working on it. <laughs> You're packing. Yeah, that's right, I'm packing. They told me, and I wouldn't believe it. I said, Hollinger, the most valuable man on my staff, gonna walk? Uh, Never. Uh, how valuable can I be when Prentice doesn't even know my name? Prentice? Prentice who? <laughs> Big Bob. Up in the penthouse. That Prentice, what's the matter with you? He's a publisher. What does he know? He's the head of the company. He got lucky. If his father didn't die, he'd be in the mailroom. Charlie, nevertheless, he runs the magazine. I run the magazine. Anyway, who hired you? Who gave you your first opportunity? Oh, look, look Charlie, I, look, I can't tell you how great you are. I'll tell you how great I've been. I gave you your first byline. I recovered the chairs in your office. I gave you this pretty little electric pencil sharpener so you wouldn't have to go in a closet and do that for hours. All you have to do is this. That's how great I've been, and you've got no gratitude. That's what it boils down to. Oh, oh look, Charlie, I'm very grateful to you. Grateful isn't walking out on a guy cold and leaving him in a mess. That's what you're doing. Look, you know I would never do that. You wouldn't? Then take this pencil, sharpen it onto your electric pencil sharpener, and write on a paper 100 times. I will answer to Charlie Lindstrom, not to what's-his-name, the publisher. Uh, let me think about it, Charlie. Uh, How long? <laughs> I don't forget what I said. I'm sorry. It's all over. Just like it never was. <sighs> Well, 
I, uh, I had a talk with Charlie. Looks like I'm gonna stay. Oh, Don, you're making the smartest move in the world, in the whole wide world. Oh, you're gonna be big in the magazine business someday. They're gonna talk about you the way they talk about Hearst, Luce, uh, Horace Greeley. Thanks, Jerry. Again, I appreciate the sentiment. Give me that, Bauman. You can't handle it. Listen, Don, take this and put that zinger to it. You're the only one who can do it. And you'll go back on that baby formula story. <laughs> Well, uh, gee, can you imagine that? How time flies. Excuse me, I'm late. So this is why you didn't want me to throw myself to the wolves, right? Don, do you think for one moment that I consider myself in your class? Do you think I feel I'm on your level? I know where I belong. I know I need support. <laughs> Even Ruthie could help me with a story about a baby formula. And she's waiting for me, so if you'll excuse me. Y yeah, go ahead, Jerry. I hate to see you get home at an indecent hour. <laughs> Impossible. Impossible. There is no way to fix this. There is no way anyone on Newsview could fix this story. <clears throat> Except me. <laughs> Jerry! Oh, my goodness! Oh, what happened? Oh, my back. It's, it's my back. Don't, don't touch me. You'll start a chain reaction. What happened? I was bending over the cooler for a drink and... Everything went black. Well, there's there's water on the floor. Have I got, huh? Jerry, Jerry, what is it? Have I got a case? Not against this rude outfit. Here, hold on to me. Oh. Daddy, take him it, into the office. I'll call Dr. Wheeler again. Okay. Oh. Okay. It's an old football injury. I was tacked. What do you kids know about bad backs? One day over Berlin. <laughs> Don't worry about risking your life in this building anymore. Oh, uh, honey, look, I've decided to stay. Oh, Donald, I'm so glad. I was hoping you would. And, Donald, I want you to promise me something for as long as you write for Newsview. What? Don't ever lose your ambition or give up your dreams and always wear your galoshes. <laughs> well, at least now the back of everything is going to be as clean as the front. How would you like to make an arrangement to come every Wednesday? Usual fee, lunch, and car fee. No cheese sandwiches? It's a deal. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> I didn't know you had company. <laughs> uh, she's the maid. <laughs> well, I just wanted to let you know that uh, we're on top of last night's accident. <laughs> and we know the victim was a friend of yours. Another uh, coincidence, Hollinger? Is this the man? This is the man. Look, please, before we go all through this again, mm -hmm. let me tell you something. The man who fell is an employee in the next office, and the reason he fell is because nobody reported that leaky water cooler, which has already almost cost Newsview magazine a major lawsuit. Now, reporting that cooler, doesn't that fall under your jurisdiction? Well, I don't know. Uh, perhaps so. <laughs> well, I, I should think you would have taken steps to ensure the security of these sacred halls. I mean, if, if Mr. Uh, uh, What's-His-Name, the publisher, ever found out, I don't think he'd think too kindly of such an oversight. Well, if he heard about it, he might not. Does he have to hear about it, Hollinger? <laughs> I mean, if I take care of it right away. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry if I caused you any inconvenience. <laughs> if there's anything that please, I can please, do... Please, please. It's only my affection for this organization that prevents me from creating any further crisis. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks a lot, Holland. Well, nice to have met you, maid. <laughs> the things I do for this company. That's because you love Newsview. And I think when you love a company, you should stay with it. And, you know, a new company would have, have different things you'd have to get used to, and, and they wouldn't understand you the way your old company did. I'll bet you'd, you'd start thinking about this place and, and missing it, too. Well, I certainly don't want to go through life carrying a torch for Newsview magazine. <laughs> or for you. <laughs> well, since neither one of us is ever going to let you go, don't worry about it.